properly built sales funnel can be the difference between a wildly successful business and a business that's just kind of limping along. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three steps you can use to build a successful Shopify sales funnel and why they all work together so well. First step in the funnel, squeeze page. Now this is a type of landing page that collects an email address in exchange for something, some kind of lead magnet, whether it's a free report or a checklist or a free training. Now the reason that this is important is it allows you to start collecting emails to build an email list that you can market to later to try and sell other products to. The reason this email marketing is important is it keeps you from having to rely solely on retargeting ads and email marketing is very inexpensive, which gives it a super hard return, super hard, super high return on investment. Now this squeeze page, it's going to build trust with visitors because if they're putting their email address to get the free report, they're displaying some level of trust. And from the squeeze page, it's gonna take them to a sales page and that trust is gonna give you a higher conversion rate. Now, the sales page, this is part number two. Don't just let this be a plain old product page. You want to actually be a sales page. There's slight differences in the frame of mind of someone who's going on a website like Amazon and searching for a specific product and someone who ends up on your sales page. Most, in most cases, they aren't going to your specific website, sitting in there, typing it in, clicking directly on it immediately and going to buy it. Normally they found your website through some other way. They're going to need some bit of salesmanship to push them over the edge to buy. Now, like I said, with the squeeze page being before this and then coming to the sales page, they're going to have more trust with you, but you still can't just be like, hey, here's this thing. You have to explain to them what the benefits are, why this thing's gonna help them. Ideally, you wanna include things like a headline, a call to action, something that's gonna drive them to it, maybe even some bonuses to push them over the edge. And obviously, sales copy that explains to them what the benefits they're going to receive from purchasing this product. From the sales page, we get into upsells. Now there's two different kinds of upsells. We'll start with the most common one, pre-purchase upsells. Now pre-purchase upsells, kind of like the name suggests, they happen before someone actually puts in their credit card information and tries to make the purchase. They add something to cart and then you go, hey, do you want this? Yeah. yeah. Sure, add it, and then they purchase. Now this is fine but it kind of fights some of our buyer psychology and it results in a little bit lower conversion rate than if you use what's called a one-click upsell or a post-purchase upsell. Now, the one-click upsell or post-purchase upsell, also known as one-time offer, all these names mean the same thing. It's an upsell that happens after someone's put in their credit card information. Now, this positioning after the credit card information gives you as the seller two distinct advantages. The first is the simplest part. When someone goes to buy the upsell, they just have to click one button, it's added, it's purchased, it's done. The second advantage happens in how our brains kind of compare things and perceive the purchasing process. So when you use a pre-purchase upsell, they add it to their cart and then they go to purchase. Now, one, they're gonna see the bigger price tag, but two, their brain starts comparing both of those as a single purchase and as a bigger decision. Now, when you split those up, when you have them make this decision, their brain considers this upsell as a completely different decision. I don't know why our brains do that, but once they have done this first part and enter their credit card information, the brain's just like, that decision's done. It's over with, it's out of here. Now this second decision, instead of being like, oh, but I just bought this other thing, the brain is just like, well, do I want this thing at this price? Now, yes, some people are more in their heads when they're buying things and they work through it as one big buy decision regardless, but a lot of the times it doesn't work that way. And then people just see this as, oh, do I want this? I already made this decision. That decision's done over with. Do I want to make this decision? 
by splitting it up, it increases the conversion rates for you, which ultimately, if you have a good product, is also helping your customers because your product is actually useful. So by increasing your conversion rates, you're getting more sales inside your sales funnel. Recap, quick three steps to the Shopify sales funnel. You need your squeeze page, your sales page, and your preferably one click upsells. Now, you can take the time to try and stitch this all together inside Shopify with a bunch of different apps that you try and connect together. Personally, I just like using ClickFunnels. It's really easy to use and it connects directly with Shopify and imports all your sales straight into your Shopify dashboard. On top of that, it's extremely easy to use. It's just drag and drop. You can make anything you want and you don't have to be technically inclined and it keeps you from having to hire anything out. But regardless, if you wanna learn more about building your own sales funnel, go down in the description. You can grab a copy of my Sales Funnel Mastery Quick Start Guide. It's gonna be free, it's my gift to you. Go ahead and do that. Also, while you're down there, if you found any value in this video, make sure to go ahead and like the video. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.